It's working? OK. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming, uh, all 10 of you. Um, there's actually, no, uh, there's another presentation, th this, this slot, that actually I want to be at right now. So I appreciate you giving up on that one and coming to this one. It's really, really great of you. Um, so this talk is one I wanted to do for a while. And I just want to tell you a little bit about it before I get, get into the meat of it. But for the last couple of years, uh, I've built a lot of Joomla sites, right? We've built two, three hundred Joomla sites. We manage two, three hundred Joomla sites on a pretty regular basis. And we have discovered that in Joomla, we have this idea that, oh, we can go to the extension directory, we can uh, install an extension, and we can use it. And it's a really great way to get, get stuff done, right? It's fast. But what ends up happening is we install dozens of extensions. And then we need to migrate that website or update that website. And the extensions that we installed early on to get started fast and to get, get going end up being the things that prevent us from moving forward with Joomla, the core. Um, Diane is here. And I was actually talking to Randy Carey the other day about the Joomla Community Magazine. Do you mind if I? Uh, oh, OK. So um, the Community Magazine was built on Joomla 1.5 and uses K2 as the article management. And the problem that the, the team is having currently is they would love to get off of Joomla 1.5 and use Joomla. Oh, OK, Joomla, OK, OK. Nice, at least you got that far. Um, so they would really like to use core content, probably, hoping. And, and so they're, but they're held back because they got all this data in, in this other tool. And it's just a bit of a mess. And we create this problem for ourselves all the time, not just in content, but in other things. How many photo gallery extensions that are out there that you've used? And then you've got this photo gallery, and it didn't make it to Joomla 3. And now you've got all these records in this database of all these pictures with descriptions and slides and things. It's just a really big pain. So. I'm, I'm hoping that the, the, when you come out of this talk, you'll think, OK, rather than running to the JED immediately and finding something, you'll think about, how can I use the core to do this feature or to implement this on this website? So I'm going to have a couple examples and show you some cool things that you can do with core right now that you're probably using an extension to accomplish. And the idea is that I'm not showing you everything that you can do with the core, but that by looking at the examples, you'll think, oh, I never thought about that before. And I can do that a little bit differently and get exactly what I want from core and not install an extension. So I'm going to go into that. But before I do, um, with a title like May the Core Be With You and with the theme of the Voyager and Orion, this title is a little bit more appropriate, right? <laughs> um, so we have to have just a couple more Star Wars related images and pictures just, just to be interesting. All right, so why more core? Why more core? I kind of talked about that, right? We want to really focus on core, but what are the, some of the things that we get when we use core that we don't get with extensions? Um, the first one, easier upgrades, right? Everything's in content. Has anyone ever had an issue migrating content, just pure Joomla content, even from 1.5? You did, one issue? So I never had an issue with content. I never had an issue with content. I never had an issue really with users or menus. Everything in core migrated pretty decently. It was the other extensions that caused a lot of problems. And the reason for that is because there's thousands and thousands of users using that core migrator, using core content, and all the bugs and issues, all that got discovered really quickly, and it got fixed really quickly. But when you're using an extension that only you know a couple hundred people are using, and they may not be migrating, you don't have that user base of everyone working and finding issues and finding problems to move that extension and force that developer to fix their issues and get the migration to work properly. So by using core, you get to avoid that issue, that upgrade issue. The other thing you get is some extension compatibility. And this extends uh, not just uh, versions of CMSs, but also to things like security and upgradability and just all of those great things. And I have an example of where extension compatibility 
can actually really hurt you. This is, anyone know Fabric? I pointed, sorry. Um, so Fabric is a application development uh, form builder type of tool for Joomla. And I actually really love Fabric. It's a great tool, I use it a lot. Um, but they posted this on their website when Joomla 3.3 came out. Do not update to Joomla 3.3, because our extension has an issue. And this, I saw it, and I, I thought, wow, every single person using this extension right now can't update to Joomla 3, because they'll lose this extension, they'll lose this feature. And I don't know exactly if Joomla 3.3 was a huge security release, it might have been, but think of uh, a, you know, a site that had user data, customer information, uh, credit cards, passwords, all of that. If this website, who's running Fabric, can't update to Joomla 3 because they run Fabric and they get hacked, basically the developer is, is really screwed here, right? Because they can't update. They can't make any progress with getting their Joomla site up to date. And this extension is the reason. It, it blocked them. So I'm not, not, not picking on Fabric, I love Fabric, but this is what can happen. You get stuck and blocked by extensions that are a big part of your website. So this can be a really big issue. The other thing that you get as a benefit of using Core is really knowledge transfer. And that, that knowledge transfer is, happens in, in two ways. The first way is within your company. I said we host like two or 300 websites. We have a team currently of three and a half people. Um, for me to have to explain how I built a website four years ago to another person who came on our team just a couple months ago would be impossible. I can't possibly try to remember how I built it, remember what I did, or explain to them where a certain string that they might need to change some content. I have no idea where that is. I created it forever ago, and I've built 50 sites since. There's no way that I can remember. But I kind of know that I've built all the websites the same. And I, if I know that I put everything in core content, in core places, I can tell them, look, I don't need to tell you where that's at, because if you go look, you're gonna find it exactly where you would expect. You don't have to go dig around in K2, you don't have to dig around in Zoo, in extra fields, or in some obscure component that you have no idea that it's doing that. You don't have to do any of that. So knowledge transfer internally in your team is gonna be so much better. You're gonna be able to say, here, go work on this website, and just, they can do it. They don't, have to, they don't have to dig around and try and find stuff. The other place that this works really well is with your clients. I have a few clients that I built, we built Mambo sites for them, and Joomla 1 sites, and 1.5 sites, and 3 sites. We built them all the same. So the client has, even though the interface has changed and some things are in different places, they don't have to think about, oh, in this website, I go to content. In this website, I go to zoo. Over here, I have to go into K2. And over here, this, this photo gallery thing that they sent me up with, which is completely different. It's a mess. That, that, that is messy. Now, I do have that situation a little bit in some cases, but I, I can avoid it now that I have some tools to try and, and work around that problem. So this is a, a really key benefit. Um, and it's future-proof, right? Because we've already covered kind of the, the upgrade ability, the upgrade path. All of that is really much more uh, efficient for teams. So what am I saying, right? Don't use extensions. No extensions. Uh, you're telling me <laughs> we've got 8,000 extensions on the JED and I can't use them, right? So not, not quite. Um, we do use uh, probably four or five extensions, but to be honest, they're mostly administrator tools to make my life as a, as a builder uh, more eff effective. So we do use some extensions. I'm not saying don't install extensions, um, but, but think about the long-term impact when you do install an extension, what the support of that is gonna end up being for you. Okay, uh, with that said, I'm going to teach you to use the force. Uh, let's, let's look at a couple examples of how we can use core to do cool things. So the first example I have is really simple. It's a carousel, bootstrap carousel. It just slides images with captions. And we're gonna do it entirely with core. Without, we're gonna write just a little bit of PHP. We're not gonna write any JavaScript and a little bit of HTML. It's really simple. 
Um, if you think about, if you want to think about how it, it's done, this is basically the map of how we're going to do it. If you don't want to pay attention for the next couple minutes, you can read this and figure out what I'm going to do. It's pretty simple. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this file. This, does everyone familiar with modules PHP? What it does? This file is located in your template, and it's what's called a module Chrome. And a module Chrome is basically any markup that you want to add around your module content. So default in Joomla, modules get two things. They get a title, and they get content. And that's, I'm pointing again. I'm going to make Diane mad. OK, that is uh, this, this module object. So this just gets injected with the module object. And it, it takes a couple parameters. This is the name of the Chrome, specifically. This is a default function name. It always has to be called this. And I'll explain where this comes in next. What we've got here is some basic bootstrap markup. And I apologize for how gross this whole echo escaped character thing is. Um, it sucks. But, but this is basically what we're doing. We're, we're crafting the individual module carousel here. So get the, get the image from the module, clean up the suffix a little bit, and then create the markup. Pretty simple. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the template. So this is a templates index PHP file. And we are creating a module position. We're creating the container around the carousel. So this is all default bootstrap markup. And then we have this XHTML here, which references that carousel inner, which is the name of that function that we just looked at. And this just loads all of the modules in that position. So what this ends up doing on execution is we get the wrapper markup from the template, and we get the specific carousel items from the module Chrome. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to create an alternate layout. Alternate layouts are basically your component or module view file. And we're going we're gonna to just add a new one. We could have overrid the, the previous one, but then it would have changed for all the modules. And I really want this for just the modules and the carousel. So to create a new layout, the process is uh, to simply copy the view file into the template and rename it, and then change the contents. All right. So I want to do a sanity check here. This is a summary of the files that we just messed with. All right. So the first one is index.php which is we added a template uh, module position. Modules PHP, we added a module Chrome. And then the last thing we did, we created a new file in this location with one line of PHP. All right, we're going to create a module. So custom module, this is pretty quick. We build the module. So it gets a title. It gets the content. Uh, for the very first module that you want to be the, the active one that when the screen loads, you can give it this active class, and it'll be the first one. The last thing we're going to do is actually give it the image. This is handy. Um, we're going to give it the background image, and that's it. So let's see uh, what we got. Oh, this is where you select the um, module alternate layout. So that's the alternate layout. It's not in the module. It's in the template. And you can see it actually identifies itself as coming from Protostar. Yes, so my son. is the name of the PHP file. Yep. All right. So what are the results? Whoops. Too fast. So there is our, our carousel. So default bootstrap is already in Joomla. Uh, the JavaScript's already in Joomla. And all the tools to build a simple carousel already in Joomla. So we avoided installing one of the hundreds of carousel, module, slider, widgety things from the gen. And this is totally updatable, upgradable. You can upgrade your Joomla site. You break the template, OK. Go recreate the module position. It's about 10 lines of code. And all your content got migrated up. It's in mod, uh, mod custom. And you're done. You can recreate this. You can repurpose this. You don't have to stick with the, the carousel. You can do some tabs or any other layout fancy thing you want to do, lightbox, whatever. All of that's available because of this way this is built out. OK. One more, uh, one more example. Um, I really wanted to demonstrate this particular feature because I think it's really cool. Um, we're going to create 
a alternate layout for a component. And what that's going to enable us to do is basically have a really custom uh, layout for COM content and create some really powerful, basically, you can get into content types this way. So this is the gateway to some, some really custom stuff. And it's all supported in core. So here's, uh, again, uh, order of operations, what we're going to end up doing. We're going to copy a uh, view around in the component. We're going to make a couple minor changes. And we're going to mess with some XML even. And then we'll have a finished, completed alternate layout. I'm going to show you where these files are located right away, because it's kind of a big tree. Um, but in com content, there's right views, then the, all the views you have, and then this DMPL directory. And then these are the specific uh, view files. We're going to copy them down here. You can see I renamed them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what we, we edited in these files. So the top part of the XML looks like this. This is before we edit it, OK? Um, and it's still called blog. And this highlighted blog word here, we're going to end up changing this. So this is language keys. And this gets parsed by the menu manager. So when the menu manager goes and shows you, here's all the menu types you have available, it's these XML files. So we, we created a new one. We put it in our template. We put it in. We put it in our template. <coughs> OK, now I've renamed it. Now it's called accordion XML. Uh, we've changed the blog keyword to accordion. And now this is going to show up in the menu manager as a different menu type. There's a lot of markup in this file. This is not all of it, but this is the gist of what we end up creating. Uh, it's similar to the, uh, the carousel, but it's just the accordion stuff from Bootstrap. The, the, this A class toggle here, we're pulling a category ID just to create, gener or to create an ID for every single item based on category ID and item ID down here. And then the, the title gets loaded in here. So this is going to end up being the top part of our accordion. And then down here is actual content for the accordion. All right. We go to the menu manager. There's the new item. And you can see it's kind of messy looking. If you wanted to clean this up, you could actually go to the language manager and add the string and give it a proper title. But I was too lazy to do that. All right. Um, I edited the module a little bit, or the sorry, module menu item. Um, all I did was I'd said I didn't want any columns, and that I just show me all the items in here currently. So that's that's pretty much it. And now you can see we have content loading in a nice working accordion. You can accordion all the content in there. So that's that's pretty basic, but. I think hopefully you see how powerful this is. Because you can now go in and create completely custom layouts, just like you would do in K2 or Zoo, but with content. And you can do it without losing them in updates, losing them in upgrades, and all with core. All right, I have one more example. And this really belongs on like Lifehacker or something like that. This is a total like hacky thing. And you might say, Chad, I will never do that, or I would never recommend that. But it, it's really powerful, and you, you'll probably not like it, but I think it's cool, so I'm going to show you. What we're going to do, oh, let me recap before I do that. Um, let me just explain what the, the whole gravity of this, sorry. There's uh, 100 rotators and 420 slideshows on the JED. That's a lot of code, someone. <laughs> There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of developers who've written a lot of code for doing things that are supported in core. Basically, my keyboard's not working. We've got 500 extensions that we just got to avoid using. And that means that there's probably tons of sites that have installed these extensions. So those all have to be maintained. The developers all have to keep them up to date. Uh, the implementers have to keep worrying about getting them to the next version and supporting it. The main, just think of all the maintenance that has to go into supporting this code base. It's an enormous amount. All right, last example. So we're going to create an, a language override. We're not going to actually override any current language string. We're going to create a new language string that doesn't even exist. So it's pretty simple. We give it a constant. This is the when it's accessed in code, this is what we call. 
and this is the actual value that gets replaced. So this is traditionally used for changing language strings and components. If you've got things like read more, this, or whatever, um, this is where you would go to, to change those types of strings, or hard-coded strings that get distributed with components. And they're all translatable, and it's actually a pretty decent system. But we're going to hijack it. You can use this constant from the language manager in any executable Joomla code anywhere. So think about that. I could actually take this value and I could put it into a query. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but I could. I could put this in a template and tell my customer, hey, go to the language manager if you want to change that string. It's there. All you got to do is edit and save. So you have an admin interface for any value key type of operation you want to run, all from the language manager. This is really cool. Now, again, you probably don't want to use it in like a query or something that can get really jacked. Uh, jacked up, but this is a cool, cool little. Again, it's a life hack, right? It's it's just cool. So, simple examples, right? But what's the? I have a bigger picture. I have an ulterior motive for this talk, and that is this. Core is powerful. Core does a lot already. It doesn't need a whole lot of help actually, but it, it does need some help. And my vision not my vision, but my idea for core, is that eventually core will be powerful enough that we really won't need a lot of extensions. The extensions that you'll need for core are going to be have to be pretty important. Otherwise, you don't really need them. And I think in an ideal world, core becomes something that is really obviously small, but really powerful. And I think we're moving there with things like distros, distributions, and everything. But there's a problem. The problem is that if we add all these features into core, right? if we improve core and make it better, um, we end up with this problem. We get, we get bloated CMS. right? The core gets huge, so we have to avoid that problem. Um, and to avoid that problem, what we have to do is, as developers, if we train ourselves to not just go to the extension directory and install an extension, but instead we take a second and we, we try to think outside the box and we go, well, maybe I can accomplish this by hijacking the core somehow, or not hijacking the core, but using the core in a way that we wouldn't have thought of before this talk, possibly. Um, and by doing that, I think what you'll end up doing is you'll find gaps in the core, right? Things that it can't do that it probably should do. And the idea is that we'll, we'll, we'll fill in the gaps, we'll improve core to a point where it is really powerful, but it's powerful in a way that isn't abusive to the size of the code base and that it doesn't get just completely uh, you know, a mess in terms of maintenance. So overall, I think may the core be with you is not let's, let's do all this cool stuff with the core as much as it is let's focus on the core. Focus on what it can do and what type of things it should do that maybe just a few changes of code or a few new lines or some different thinking can make it more powerful than it currently is. Uh, and, and by doing that, I think we'll really improve the CMS. I think that it will become way more powerful than it is now, and we won't need to use extensions and deal with migrations and things like that as much. We'll still need them, but not as much. So as you go out and you go to the JET and you think about extensions, think, can I do this with core? Can I accomplish this with core? And push the core to its limits. Literally say, I want, make a rule. I, I'm not going to install extensions. Or I'm not going to install many extensions. And it's similar to the, uh, the keynote earlier, see what happens. See what kind of creative thinking you end up coming up with. What types of things would you change about the sites you're building or the extensions you're s installing and what kind of changes would you make to the core that you could easily, you know, get in and get into their, uh, into the code base that would make it just so much easier for you to use for as a development tool, and and save yourself an extension. Um, so I think that's really what this is about. So that's what I had. Thank you. That would be a good one.
Also, a, a final quote from Master Yoda. I should have. I didn't think of that. The core is strong with this one. <laughs> if you guys have questions, feel free. I didn't think there would be really many. So, um, you know, if you had some something where I think modules is probably not the best example, but I understand what you're saying is uh, the interface can really influence how you think about things. So, um, I was talking to someone earlier, and they basically said, "I don't even install extensions for simple things anymore. I just build custom components." And the reason they do it is because I can build a component. It has exactly the fields I need. It has exactly the database design I want. It does exactly what I want. And it's really simple for the client. And I, I get that. I totally get that. And, and I've done that, too. And, I, and we still do that. Um, so yeah, that, that's a completely valid argument against, against uh, you know, this route. Um, so yeah, that's valid. Right. Yeah, that's a client problem. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, that is the dark side. <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, uh, and the um, slide show example you showed, that would be in. Can you show us how that works in the backend? Do you have that set up? For the slideshow? Yeah, the, if you set the modules, is it one image in? You just create new modules and put them in that position for every slide. Because it's a module position, right? So all of them go in the same position. And then the jQuery just stacks, stacks it out, and you've got the markup. So all, you're just, every slide is a new module, so it new instance. It doesn't have to be images. It could be text. It could be embedded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be whatever they want. Yeah, whatever they want. And that's what most slide shows can do. So I would have my client present a bunch of modules together into one uh, interface and put them in history or you would say for every uh, every item in the carousel, yeah. create a new custom module yeah. and put it in this position. So if you wanted to, if you cared a, a lot about that, um, you would end up having to do a little bit of JavaScript. Um, I didn't spend a whole, there's a couple ways to do it actually. So. Um, thinking about different ways. The first thing you could do is you could use some parameter in the module. Um, you could just basically take any anything that's there, mm, maybe notes or something like that. You could just say, use this value for the, the length of time. And then you would have to write some JavaScript in PHP to inject that into the template to, to pull that value. Or you could do it directly from, I would honestly do it from the, um, from either the template or the module Chrome. So at, at the template, because with, with the, the Bootstrap jQuery uh, deal, uh, let's see if I can find it. <laughs> that's actually better. That's, that's exactly what you should do. You should do a language value. So you do the language constant thing. And then in your template, you just you write, there's a, right, a selector in jQuery. And you just say, here's the carousel ID, and then here's the value I want, jtext equals, and then you get your constant. That's actually the best, the best way. <laughs> I totally, whoever, who thought of that? Well, I think they're both. You right. thinking it? Yes, that is exactly what you should do. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it, w it would be a cool, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, I think of it as like a life hacker, Joomla hacker type thing. You're, you're not hacking the core, but you're 
doing creative, non-traditional solutions with what you already have. That's, that's the key. Now, um, you should know better than me. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so with, with the new template manager that we have in core. I don't know this, but okay. <laughs> okay, now you should know better than me. So first we need to create the template. Um, do you know if you can create the files that you show the user create through the template manager? That's a good question. So they are over you can create the overrides. Uh, you can do the overrides. Um, that you can do. Um, oh, this is going to be trippy. Uh, you see the last time I squashed bugs. Uh, oh, I don't even know my username. Lucky. Uh, uh, did I go the wrong place? Yeah, I just uh, click on the right. Did I do it wrong? It's supposed to be just clicking it with the mouse button. Oh. Um. So you go. So yeah. Create overrides. Com content. I think I used the category. Alright, editor. HTML. Oh, just a view main bar and title, no? Uh, I think so. Huh? <coughs> New file, or rename file. Yeah, you could do it all from here. I don't know if I need to do it. Uh, file name containing. What did I mess up? Oh, you took the dot page to get link. No, that is the file name. Let's go to this one. Ah, okay. So. Try with HTML as well. If I did it without a typo, that'd be bad. Yeah. So this is a live demo that's actually going pretty good. <laughs> and it was complete. <laughs>I can Yeah, yeah. Um, or you can go and add it in the yeah. language manager too. Well, I haven't done any of the markup, so. <laughs> yeah, that shows up. It's kind of hard to type in this position, I gotta say. The typos are not normal, <laughs> just the angles. Anyone know what main, main mode is? Okay. So, yeah. What else? So I was thinking of like some cool like other uh, sample type of uh, extensions or, or applications. So you could, anyone know how you would do like a, a whole photo gallery? Like think of, anyone ever use like Foca, Foca gallery or similar things? You know how you could do that in core now? Anyone have any idea what you would do? You've got the, the image uh, full size and image uh, other, other one in, uh, in content in articles, so you could just use the, the article body as like the description, right? And then um, 
pull up the, the image and just create a layout and you have your thumbnails and everything that work. So you can no, you no longer need a, a photo gallery extension. Um, in com contact, you could really, that could be like juiced up. You could add like modal light boxes to pop up the, the form and um, you could do some jQuery filtering of uh, like a directory, like a whole directory extension right out of contacts. Um, you can do it in content too, but yeah. Yeah, I left that one out. <laughs> not not in, so. <laughs> I left it out because um, you you the reason I left it out is simply semantically, it's not core. It's a plugin. But what he's talk he's, what he's talking about is the ability to add literally add extra fields to content or to contacts or anything else, which you can do. It's, uh, and, and, we, and it's something we do. Um, use a plugin to override the, the load form method in com content, and then you just inject a new J form there. So you create the XML for the J form. So you do a kind of form algo. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's set up to do it though, it's designed to actually accept it, so you don't have to like, it's not hard. Um, there is? Oh yeah, user profiles. Um, yeah, user profiles is perfect. I have uh, somewhere. Um, no, no, uh oh, what's that noise? By the way, this website, Sophie, is, uh, I'm gonna totally plug right now, is one of the um, websites that is on the uh, Josker nominations. It's called Solar Fields. And if you haven't submitted your vote yet, you know how cool it is, but I'm gonna show you this. Nice. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I tried to tell a bunch of people earlier. Um, yeah, all right, so this is the plugin <laughs> that you end up writing. And it, it goes like this. So on the prepare form, you've got this event, right? And you've got to do a whole bunch of stuff. So this is where you would load in the form. And then you also have to if check and see if there's uh, values already for the, the data. And then, and then you could populate the form uh, right here. Populate the form. So that's when it, that's when it loads, right? And then on save, you use this event, and you have to kind of do the same thing. You, you pull all the values out of the object, and then do uh, an update record. And I just wrote a simple insert record method for that, which is uh, down here. So this method, it takes the, the object and the article ID, and it just populates the database, and does the same thing on an update, which now that I'm thinking, I probably don't need two methods to do that. Yeah, essentially, it's doing it twice, but hey, just to make sure. yeah, insert update. It should be that. And if I was really fancy, I would have used JTable, but I was too lazy to get into all that. But yeah. And, and there is an example in course. That you yes, there is. Um, yeah, profiles. Profiles does it. So I use this. Um, I'm going to demo this website so you can see. So on solar fuels, which is one of the ones on the Joskers, if you haven't submitted yet, this map right here, this map, um, we wanted to, this map, the way that the pins are put on the map, they're all content items. And the way that we control our position is with extra fields, we s let the uh, backend person set the absolute position, um, top, bottom, left, right, so they can figure out, okay, I need to put this, you know, down 20 pixels and then right, you know, 30 pixels. So this, the, the job of the extra, extra fields plugin is to give them the fields to input that information. And they also have uh, this custom, custom link, uh, or wait, link? Yeah, the visit site link right here. That's all uh, extra field. This doesn't look so good. Don't, oh, it's not supposed to. They didn't want it to be able to, 
I don't know. They, were, they had a stupid, they made me change it. It's not my fault. Anyways, that's how you do that. So that's actually um, something we're doing a lot more of too. The, the current issue with that one is you have to, you can't have like types. Well, you can, but so let's say you want one category to be these fields and then another category to be this other set of fields. Right now, the, the plugin I have would just load that same form for every single content item, which is not so great. But you could get more fancy and um, detect which category the content item is in, in the plugin, and then decide which uh, form to load. So you could, you could do that, but there was no reason to do it on this site. But if you wanted to have true like CCK type stuff, you would have to, you'd have to figure that out. It's not hard, but you'd have to do it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Again.